Round and round it goes, and where she stops, nobody knows. Good morning, everybody. It's Stephen here for Bland Designs and the Idiot Quilter, and welcome to my weekly vlog for Monday, February the 21st, 2022. And it is vlog number 254, and it is the 714th day of COVID. Okay, let's jump right into my current projects here. So here is the one. You've seen this before in various stages. This is the one I call Gnomes, Kitties, and Butterflies. Although I'm thinking I should call it One of These Things Doesn't Belong, and I'll explain that in a moment. But here it is completely done. It has been layered. It has been quilted on Lucy, and it does have a, a binding on it. And um, yeah, it came out pretty good. I was a little worried about colors running because I have a lot of white and the blue is kind of dark, but I threw it in the washing machine. Uh, when it was done with a couple of color catchers and no problem. Now, um, I'll just show you here what the backing looks like. So there's the back and you can see I just used this mottled blue. I think it's from Northcott and I think it's a Tuscan um, line of fabric, they call it. And you can see on here my quilting and I just did what's called a scribble using a pantograph on Lucy. And here's a close-up shot of what that looks like all in here. And, you know, this was a quilt that I made on a whim. And um, I wasn't so sure about it when I first got working on it. It's all made up primarily of scraps. There's a little bit of yardage in it, but not much. Um, I was just playing around with these cat, butterfly, and gnome blocks. And I'm kind of pleased with the way it turned out. It's very, very bright. And I think it would be really appropriate for a, a kid or a young person. Uh, as well. But I said one of these things doesn't belong. So if you look down here on this row, um, you will notice that, well, first of all, the kitties. I put the kitty next to the butterfly that are made from the same fabric. It was supposed to go, this cat was supposed to go here, this cat was supposed to go here. Okay. Anybody going to really notice that? Yeah, they do. Who cares? But here's the other strange one. See this cat? And see this cat? See this one and this one. They are exactly the way they're supposed to be. These two are not. They have, first of all, they're cats from the 80s because they have shoulder pads. That's what I call them. Um, and this one does not have his tail locks quite right. See how this is open here in white? This one's kind of chopped up. Didn't notice it until the whole thing was done. Now, the big problem here was the fact that I'm using half square triangles and I sort of got them turned the wrong way. And the same up here. These ones, I did not use a white backing on those as I did with these two. But you want to know something? It just adds more variety to the quilt. And, um, you know, you, they have those, uh, what do they call it, fidget quilts or things that are I spy quilts for kids. Well, this could be an I spy quilt. Uh, one of these things doesn't belong. Find it, kid. Yeah. So anyways, I got that uh, all done. And as I said, I'm very happy uh, with it, even if I do have those little minor mistakes. Now, I started uh, last week, and I think I told you about it. And uh, I have the top done. And this is called, this was from a kit that I've had for quite some time. In fact, I bought this kit, I think I told you, uh, in about the first year I started quilting. And uh, yeah, so I've got it done. There were some problems. They weren't my problems. There was problems with the pattern. And I really, actually not with the pattern so much. It was the way that uh, the strips were cut. Uh, this kit came with all these strips that you see here pre-cut. And they cut them the wrong width. But not a big problem because I was able to adapt it so that everything fits together fine. Now, at first when I got this finished and I started looking at it, I went, yeah, this is an old lady quilt. No offense to older ladies out there. But what I mean by that, it is not my style. Um, you know, it's got that vintage look. It's got that uh, 1930s look in the fabric selection. All of these came with the quilt. Uh, I didn't pick these fabrics out. Um, but it's done. Now, the corners are mitered as well. And I think I did a pretty good job of that because these are strips. And these little ones along here are actually printed on the fabric. But to get them at 
45 degree angles so that the corners actually match up. And that was pretty damn good. Now, I'm not going to pretend that this was easy. It was not. I have done miter borders before, but not in quite a long time. And I did make a couple of mistakes. Had to do a little ripping out and fix it. But I got it fixed, and I think it works pretty good in this quilt. Now, I'm going to give this quilt a little bit more of a detailed analysis and talk about some other problems I had with it on tomorrow's edition of the Idiot Quilter. So if you're a quilter and you're interested in that, you may want to tune in to the Idiot Quilter tomorrow. And another project is this. Now, first of all, there's been a color shift since I took this picture, meaning that this is coming out a little bit more gray. It is actually purple and silver. Um, but for some reason, maybe because I have this white background here, it, it made it look a little bit more grayish than purple. But this is called a Celtic Knot Table Runner. It was a in-the-hoop project, so I did it all on my embroidery machine, the entire thing. And uh, it comes from Creative Kiwi. And you've heard me mention that company before. They're in New Zealand. And they have some fantastic patterns. And what I really like about Creative Kiwi is they always put up on YouTube tutorials on how to do their patterns, which I find very helpful. Um, but I really like this, the way it turned out. It would be a small table runner, although you can make it longer by adding one of these sections to it, or a couple of them. But it's not that wide, as you can see, because that's a standard cupboard door that it's mounted on. And speaking of which, I have made the decision that I might make another one of these. I have another pattern from Creative Kiwi that's on a in a similar vein as this. And um, I might make several of these and decorate my cupboard doors in my sewing studio uh, with these kind of things. I think it would look quite nice. So this is the first one. I only need to make three more different ones. And if I go over to the other cupboard doors, well, there's another four there. So this is a long-term decorative project um, kind of thing to do. So, um, yeah, I've been a busy boy, as you can see. And, uh, you know, enjoying every minute of it, I like to keep busy. Um, so that other quilt sitting on the fence that I showed you, the 1930-style quilt, that's going on to Lucy sometime today. And uh, maybe by next week, at this time, I will have that quilt all done and show you the final product. I think I'm going to quilt it with uh, a feather motif. Okay, so that takes me to the YouTube channel of the week. This one's a little bit different. It's called Trend Max, and it is just a whole variety of a whole lot of different topics. It's just fun. So here's my review of that. This week's YouTube channel of the week is called Trend Max, and I came upon this by accident, the way I come upon many YouTube channels that uh, I watch for a while, because I like cats, and I saw a little clickbait about the about cats. Um, I think it was the biggest cats in the world or something like this. So I did some more exploring of this particular uh, YouTube channel. And uh, if you take a look here, you will see that they have all kinds of different topics. And again, this is one of those little amusing time wasters that you may gain some insight into something, into a topic or whatever, or at least uh, some interesting mm, sort of facts about different things. It's purely for entertainment purposes, so I would take whatever you learn on this channel uh, with a grain of salt. So you see here they have 20 people you won't believe exist, 10 Rapunzel's in real life, top 10 biggest sharks in the world, the biggest great white shark ever, the smallest cats in the world. You can see with the clickbait that they're using how they are getting you to watch. And there's nothing wrong with that because as I said, this is kind of a um, site that's really more for personal entertainment and when you just want to veg in front of a screen. Um, so there's quite a few in their video list. There are all kinds of topics. This is one that uh, grabbed me. Uh, the biggest cats in the world. Um, that picture alone, my God, look at the size of that cat. Um, but uh, yeah, there there is stuff to be learned here. But as I said, you might want to take whatever information you get with a grain of salt because I'm not really sure how good their back uh, fact checking is um, or back checking of their facts really is. Here's their playlist. 
Um, you have anime, if you're into that, the fastest, technology, the rarest, Halloween, gaming, the strongest. Yeah, they really have such a wide variety of topics that you can, there's my cats one again right there, love the cats. Um, it can really take you down a rabbit hole uh, in here with, you know, just so many things. One leads to another, I suppose. So anyways i'm thinking that if you want something that's just mindless sort of entertainment check out trend max so you will find a link for that in the show notes below you'll find a link for uh stephen and walter live we talked a little bit more about the tr truckers occupation of ottawa and i think that's now been fairly cleaned up but we really talked about a lot of the things that uh we have gathered from the media and a lot of the stories that you're not hearing directly from the mainstream media as well. Um, Walter, you know, loves to do a lot of research. So he's been following this very closely. So uh, he's my resident expert on all things trucker occupation. So if you're interested in that, you, you'll want to check out this week's Stephen and Walter Live. And there is a link to um, Trend Max, as I said. Uh, my Idiot Quilter episode 154, uh, Problems with Sellers. You know that I was running into a problem. Uh, I'll say a bit more about that and how that's resolved um, with a pattern I've been trying to get from a place out in BC. So I went into a little bit more about problems with sellers that, you know, you might want to be aware of and how to deal with that. And um, I didn't have an interview this week, so you had to listen to me spew forth. And I, this week I talk about how I got my get my mojo back. You know, I'm one of those kind of people that has to keep busy. But there are some days I get up and I stare at my computer screen. And I stare at my list of things and I go, oh, do I really feel like doing that today? I'd rather just curl up on the couch with a coffee and watch mindless videos. Um, I try to hold myself back from doing that for various reasons. But I talk about how I get myself inspired uh, on that episode of the Idiot Quilter Presents. Uh, there is also the latest uh, edition of So Chatty, number 48, episode 48. And I call it a potpourri of questions from a subscriber. And you know that I've been asking, and I'm still asking, for possible topics that uh, I can, that Walter and I can discuss on So Chatty. Because, you know, that is the one video that I make each week that gives me the biggest problems in terms of coming up with the topic because I don't want to repeat stuff that I've said already on this vlog or on the idiot quilter I want it this to be a, a totally different entity from the other uh, YouTube videos that I do so I need your help please anything just throw it out there um in fact just as an example this was one subscriber who threw out a whole bunch of questions and at first I almost ignored them well, not ignored them. I looked at them and thought, yeah, I can't make an episode out of this. Guess what? I revisited it, thought about it, and yeah, and I think we made a pretty decent episode based on this one subscriber's questions and thoughts. So yes, I consider everything. So please, if you've got ideas for So Chatty or for any of um, my videos, please feel free to either drop them in the comments below or send me an email. My email address is there in the show notes for you. And, of course, there are some links. Now, let's talk about... Uh, well, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the retreat because I have some updates for you. I'm going to do that, do that a little later on in this episode. But um, you will find uh, three links there. Uh, two of them are Zoom links. One for the Icebreaker Cocktail Party on March the 4th, and then the main retreat on March the 5th. And then there's another link that'll take you to my Google Drive where you can download a PDF file that gives you all the details if you've missed them already about March 5th. If you have not yet, well, I might as well talk about this now uh, rather than waiting for later because here we are. If you have not uh, let me know already by sending me just a quick little message that you are attending the retreat, please do. It actually is, it's still lots of spaces left, but it is filling up. And I'll be quite honest. Uh, lots of people say they're going to come and at the last minute something changes in their life and they don't show up. So, you know, um, the more the merrier here, as far as I'm concerned. 
uh, with it all. So please, if you are, say you're thinking about going, you haven't committed yourself yet, but you know, you're 80% sure you're going to be there, then please drop me a line. Let me know that you're coming and I'll add you to the list. Also, it's important because I collect your email address as well. And don't worry, I don't give it to anybody. It's all very private. But if I have updates and the agenda for the day, when I get that done, I will be sending that out to your email address. I won't be posting that on YouTube. Okay. So yeah, another reason for you to, you know, say you're, you're planning on coming. Remember, life happens. That's okay. I understand. But it'll just help me with my stats. Okay. And my planning. Now, speaking of my planning for this, oh, yeah, well, I'm going to stick to this right now. I was going to talk about this a little later on, but we're here now, so let's do that. Okay, my planning. I've had a little bit of a change in my guest speakers lineup. Uh, I still have my keynote. I'm so excited about that person. And I still have my crafter, who's going to show us some wonderful three-dimensional items. But my other person um, has had some problems life's happened uh in their life uh that makes it uh impossible for them to meet this commitment to the retreat and that's fine okay i totally understand uh it's circumstances out of that person's control out of my control i'm putting out a feeler to another individual or two that are actually subscribers and to see if they would like to um you know present and if you would like to present something that you feel, you know, would be of interest to the entire group. And that extends beyond quilting, okay? It can be anything, really, anything creative, all right? Then let me know really soon, like by the end of this week kind of a thing, because I am trying to finalize my agenda, because we're not far off. Really, we're only, well, there's only one weekend before it. Okay, hard to believe it's the end of February, isn't it? Yeah. So if you think you would be interested, let me know what it is. Drop me an email and I'll be in contact with you and we'll settle, you know, we'll get everything finalized. Okay. And don't feel that you're, you know, well, no one would be interested in you. I have news for you. The responses I get to the interviews when I have them is tremendous. And those people that I interview, are all just what we might call ordinary everyday people. I don't believe anybody's ordinary. We're all unique, right? But yeah, so think about it. Okay, and the one more announcement I'd like to make at this point in time, and the link is in the show notes. Guess what's coming up? Craft and Chat. Not this Wednesday, but one week from this Wednesday. It'll be March the 2nd, starting at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, I think you know the drill by now if you're a regular on here where we all just get together and have a nice uh, three or four hours of just doing whatever we want to do and talking and chatting and learning from each other. So, um, you know, stay tuned for that. And if you'd like to be on my mailing list for the craft and chat, um, no problem. Just send me a, a line and I will have your email address. And what I always do is I send out to everybody on the email list for craft and chat the link uh, a couple of days in advance so you don't have to go searching through my videos to find it but they're always on uh, the videos the week before and the week of um, for you to you know link from there but it just might be more convenient for some people if I was to send you a personal invitation <laughs> right okay so that's a lot of stuff right there so moving on let's see what the weather's like outside my window today and there it is and it doesn't look that much different from last week that's the problem with february february is a gray month and uh as i show you this right now and today is february the 21st today here in canada it is family day now, this is something that the government put in place about 15 years ago. And it was basically to break up the winter force because February really doesn't have any significant holidays. And I don't consider Valentine's Day a significant holiday. Okay. Um, it's just not. It's just a way for the chocolate companies and the card companies to make some money. And the hotel business too and all that kind of stuff. But 
So today is family day. So that is a holiday here in Canada. And I think there might be a holiday today in the States as well. I'm not absolutely sure about that. But anyways, here you can see outside the front of our house, looking out across at the neighbors, um, the snow is kind of icky. Uh, we haven't really had, well, we did have some fresh snowfall earlier in the week. Um, it was kind of started as rain, went to a little bit of freezing rain, and then it went to snow, but it wasn't all that much. And you can see um, the, the temperatures have been fluctuating as they do in February. They've gone really cold. And right now, as I speak, we're at one degree Celsius, which is balmy uh, for us. And yeah, the snow's getting dirty. I hate it when the snow starts to look dirty and that, but it is melting. Now, that doesn't mean we're close to spring. No, not at all. Because we could have a huge blast of, of snow. We could have several snowy, very snowy days still in this month and into March as well. Um, welcome to Canada, so to speak. So anyways... That's what's outside my window this morning at 7.39 a.m. Okay, so that takes me to what's pissing me off this week. Well, I'm kind of exhausted with this topic, but I need to say one more thing about it. And that has to do with the trucker's occupation for the last three weeks of Ottawa. And you know all about that, so I don't need to go into the details. It looks like finally the police in Ottawa, with help from other police's police forces from across the country have ended the occupation. But one thing this occupation really showed was the stupidity of people, or as I like to call them, the whole bunch of a-holes that were out there. Because I'm sorry, anti-vaxxers are a-holes for a variety of reasons. These truckers who are trying to overthrow the government, yeah, like that was going to happen never, are a-holes as well. Am I saying that all truckers are a-holes? I certainly am not. Over 90% of the truckers were vaccinated the whole bet and doing their job. And we know the politics behind all of this on so many different levels and for so many different reasons. We had a-holes from the states that have been coming up here and stirring up the a-holes that we have up here. You know, it's a-hole upon a-hole upon a-hole. And I'm tired of the a-holes. If anything is proven to, if anything has come out of the COVID that is proven to me, there are a lot of stupid a holes in the world, a lot more than I thought there were, and that's discouraging. It's also embarrassing, as I've already said last week about being a Canadian because of all of this. I got an email from a lady in New Zealand who's a subscriber, and of course, New Zealand has been having a similar problem with the truckers, and they have been sort of following what the truckers have been doing here in Canada. Not the trend-setting moment that we really want in this country. And uh, she, want, she said that the New Zealand police were kind of taking their lead in terms of handling this from our Canadian police force. And I said, no, our police force has done a shitty job. Yeah, uh, the Ottawa Police Department, well... Need I say more when I tell you that the chief of police in Ottawa resigned? He was an a-hole. He didn't have a clue what to do. He kept blaming it on the federal government and the provincial governments. He needed help for this. He needed help for that. Well, you know, police are supposedly trained in crowd control and how to handle rioters. Now, yes, they needed extra men. There's no two ways about that. And when they finally went into action, they did a really good job once they got the support of other police forces. So they had the numbers. There was no violence. They pushed them back. They did arrest people. They arrested about, I don't know, I think it was something like 170 people or more. Good for them. Throw the book at them, is what I say. They did tow away, I think, something like 70 large transport trucks, impounded them good for them. Once they got into action, they did a fine job. But it took three weeks. Now, that's not all their fault. They were looking for direction from the federal government. And the federal government took three bloody weeks to get around to it. I think they were hoping it would just go away. It didn't. Um, so it's to be seen now, after all of this, 
what happens next. Because there were still some stragglers, pro anti-vaxxer protesters, assholes, a-holes, um, out there who were refusing to leave. So I hope they put their A's into the clinker uh, with that as well. But who knows? They may raise their ugly head again. But they didn't win. And this is the important thing. They didn't win because they didn't do it the right way. They were unreasonable. They wanted the government to fall. Not happened. They wanted Trudeau to resign. Not happening. They wanted all mandates to be lifted. Carte blanche. Not going to happen. A-holes. A-hole thinking. Um, They have been defeated. They have been destroyed. I am sure they will write on social media how this was, uh, you know, they may have uh, lost the battle, but they've won the war and all that kind of crap. No, they didn't. And if they believe that, they're even bigger a-holes than I thought they were. And they are big a-holes. Have I used a-hole a lot in this? Yeah, I have. Because they're a-holes. So, I say, you know, finally, great. It's been looked after. We didn't have violence. That's a good thing. And, you know, we'll see what happens down the road with this further. But I hope they ha are, at least inside themselves, they'll never admit to it, feeling a whole lot of shame and embarrassment, to say the least. But they're a-holes. Do a-holes ever feel that kind of thing? Guess not. Okay, so moving on, let's talk about new stuff that I've got. Well, uh, I haven't got this yet, but I have put in a fairly large order to a place out west called Stitch in the Ditch, and it's on its way. In fact, it's supposed to arrive, I think, today's the 21st. I think they said the 24th. It's coming by Canada Post, so I have a tracking number. And they had a really good sale on it, Valentine's Day. So I ordered quite a bit of stuff. And they got me at free chocolates, and I think I told you that. You know, if you ordered over $100, you got free chocolates and another free gifty. I'm not expecting either to be that sensational, but they had some good prices on some things that I thought I should have. And yes, it's more fabric, and yes, do I need more fabric? You know, you can never have enough fabric. Um, and I did, uh, go out and buy some more fabric, uh, from Ultimate Sewing this week. Um, I'm going to show that and talk more about that on the Idiot Quilter tomorrow, if you're interested. But why did I buy more fabric? Because I am getting ready for Ultimate Sewing's retreat at the end of March. And I want to take a couple of, uh, projects with me to work on while I'm there for three days. And yeah. So one of the things I needed, I didn't have enough of the fabric that I wanted for it. So I needed to go and buy more fabric. And I did. And if you, you were asking, somebody was asking about what the situation was with the um, strong and free pattern that I've been talking about lately. This is the one I'm talking about. I now have the pattern. It arrived uh, on this past Monday. I did not get it from the place in BC, Dragonfly Quilts, and I've talked all about that, and I will never deal with that company again. They absolutely suck. Um, I got this from another company, and it was really quick, so I was happy. So I'm all ready to start that, and this is going to be my next uh, quilting project. And I should be able to get started on that later this week, I'm hoping. Okay, so that's about all I've bought uh, that's new. And so let's go to the 3D corner. So what have I been working on in the 3D corner? Well, I've been working on boots and socks. And here you go. <laughs> uh, this is just whimsical. I found this model that made these shoes, uh, running shoes or something. And uh, it also did socks that fit inside it. So I had to make it because it was just fun. And here's another shot from this side. And you can see what I did was I printed out, 3D printed one of my famous thimbles that I'm always making. And uh, I glued the shoe and socks to either side of that. And now it sits over by my 3D printer and holds some of the most frequently reached for tools that I use when I'm uh, doing my 3D printing. So I just thought it was kind of fun. And you know, that's what 3D printing is really all about. 
If you're getting a 3D printer because you think you're going to make some very serious items, forget that. It is a toy for a big boy, as you've heard me say before. Um, and I'd already talked about the retreat, but uh, the ultimate sewing retreat uh, is, I mentioned that I put together those kits of things I want to work on, but Walter and I are the programmers for this. We're the entertainment kind of a thing. And uh, one of the uh, events that we're going to have is a scrap block challenge where basically people are just going to be get some random scraps and have to create an, uh, a block and then they're going to be judged and the winter winners are going to win one of these lovely trophies now these are the first two i actually have four of these made and there is a label uh down at the front of it which you know i took this picture i hadn't made those yet um but they're made with rainbow filament, which makes them really colorful. And I think they're really cute. Plus, I made them into pin cushions. Of course, I would make them into pin cushions, wouldn't I? Um, you know my obsession with pin cushions. So, yeah, I think these are going to be a lot of fun. So, that's all I've been doing on the 3D printer. But they are working as I speak right behind me. And I'm making more of those hexagon shelves. I just love those. I just love the way they look on the wall and everything. And so I'm pretty much filling up my sewing studio. I'm talking about those things right this way behind me that are up there. I have a lot of them all over the place in here. So I've got my printers today working on some more of those. Okay, that takes me to Blasts from the Past Trips. And this is Melbourne again from 2018, February the 8th, 2018. And this is day four of Melbourne and um this one I divided into two parts so this is part one of that particular day so this is day four in Melbourne and uh we had a later start today because we have a tour starting at one o'clock where we're going off to where the islands called the Phil Phillips Phillip Island. Phillip Island where there's these tiny little penguins that we're going to see there and I guess there's some other things we're going to see as well. Koalas and um, the knobbies. And the knobbies, which apparently are rocks. Um, there is a cafeteria there. I'm a little disappointed. I don't think they're serving any penguin on a stick, which is something that I wanted to try. But, anyways, so we'll see what we see today. Oh, and apparently he can't take pictures or video of the penguins for some reason. So, I guess I won't be showing any of that on this um, particular video. Tasmanian devil. He's down in here somewhere. We're looking for him. Find him? Oh, there he is. Lizard here, lizard, lizard, lizard. Well, there's a turtle here, but there's a lizard over here. I don't know where he is right now. What, the lizard? Where's the lizard? Oh, there he is down there. Hey, lizard, lizard. Gotta get a big one. I don't think these guys are too hungry. No. These ones are having a little siesta.
you give him any? No. Here, see, hold this and see if you get it. Oh, you got yours? Yeah. Let's see if he wants it. Doesn't look like he's too interested. You interested in any food? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Just a little guy. 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 Yep. Okay, so there's the crocodile. I offered to hold Walter's legs as he fed him. Didn't seem to go for that. Nice crocodile. Sleepy, sleepy. Are his eyes open? Mm. Yeah, I think so. Hmm. Yeah, these two guys scored a big much. These are the sleepy guys. Here I'm taking, I, here I thought I was taking a video when I wasn't. There you go. <laughs> what you think? <laughs> so I'd rather have a carrot. Oh, you got a carrot? <laughs> Yummy, eh? Yeah, it's giving me a scratch. <laughs> but they say the sheep shearing was at 3.15? Yeah, well, wow. 15 minutes. Well, it's not like we haven't seen it before. Oh, there's another guy on board. What's this say? Got two of them. He knows where it's coming yeah. from. Two fisted, eh? Oh, that was his. I'll just hand over here, please. <laughs> They're your new best friends. I like you. I like those claws. Oh. Hey. Oh,
Yeah. 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 Chips, that little chips. He's waiting for some food. <laughs> um, oh, so it's not to feed yeah, it? Yeah, oh, we not feed it. Okay. He wants it anyways. <laughs> but I, I think it wants some food. Yeah. Sorry, little guy. Not for you. Uh, oh, look at that. Yeah, thanks a lot. I love that. His, his paws is so sharp. Right? Yeah. Oh, it's so nice. Oh, wait, wait, he's a free year. What the heck with that? I want to they like meat. Focus. So what was it? They like mice and chickens. They eat them. Uh, they feed them mice and chickens. And they it said chicks. what? And it would it say day old chicks? Oh, those poor chicks. They feed them alive. Yeah, I don't know. Probably do. Oh, it's a sunny old gum tree. Oh, give me that one. Hey, 
show me your people. Well, they want a cracker. It's sharpening his beak. <laughs> I'm getting ready. Hello. Hello. figure out how to get down. I hope you're enjoying uh, these videos of my past trips. I'm kind of enjoying reviewing them because I haven't seen them in a bit of time. And, well, it makes me long to go traveling again. Maybe. I said to Walter the other day, my birthday's in July. And what we've done over, the, well, the, a couple of years prior to COVID, we would go each year to a place about two hours, two and a half uh, hours west of us which is basically quilt country because there's all kinds of quilt stores all over the place there. And we go for about three days, two days, three days, and uh, go to all the quilt stores. I drop a bundle of money, picking up stuff, going through the store, and I loved it, and it was fun. And, you know, we'd stay, we stayed at a relatively cheap place. We'd stay at a college dormitory, basically, um, because it's like a hotel. Um, and in the summer, of course, there's no students, so they open it up as such. Um, it's just as nice and a lot cheaper than most hotels. So anyways, we do that and, you know, we go out for dinner and stuff like that. So we are talking that maybe, maybe by the middle of July, which is when my birthday is, we might be able to do that again this year. I'm kind of hoping so because... We're really getting to the point where we want to travel, but we're not comfortable with the idea yet. So this might be a way of easing ourselves back into that mode. Um, we'll see. It depends. They're lifting the restrictions and things. Uh, this week, March the 1st, a whole bunch of other restrictions are coming off. Um, I don't know if it's too soon because we've got March break for the kids coming up in a few weeks. And people are already booking trips out of the country. And I just have this feeling that we're going to have another wave when they all go out and come back in. I don't know. I don't know. I hope not. But it is to be seen. Okay. But anyways, back to the Melbourne trip or the videos I've been showing you the last few weeks from that trip. I've had a, uh, several comments. People have said that they're really enjoying seeing that. So I hope you are. Because I'm going to continue doing it <laughs> for a while longer. Yeah. Okay. So what's coming up? Well, I've already talked about craft and chat. I've already talked about the idiot quilter retreat. Um, what else? Oh yeah. In the past week, uh, we went over to my friend's place that I've been talking about lately, who's moved out into an apartment and we got him curtains and curtain rods and Walter put them all up. It was a bit tricky because, you know, there were holes from existing curtains from other tenants that were up there in the ceiling, but the ceilings are concrete. But Walter took all his tools and we were able to get the curtains up in his bedroom and his living room, and they look really quite nice. Now, these are not expensive curtains that we bought. Um, they were panels, pocket rod panels, but we needed quite a few of them, like 10 panels to do the two windows. And even after that, we could have used a couple of more panels in each case just to make them a little more fuller. But they look pretty good, and they're up. And uh, 
Well, there's a few other things he needs, and I've been collecting these things for him. And um, I've got a, a, a floor lamp. He needs more light in his apartment. And he was talking about getting a, a table lamp for one spot. But I remembered that in our crawl space is this floor lamp. Now, it's a perfectly decent and nice looking floor lamp. It's just that when we changed over uh, the room uh, a few years ago, that that floor lamp was in we bought new lamps so it's sitting in the crawl space and there's a little table in the crawl space too that would make you know kind of a nice end table uh for him as well because he doesn't really have any so i'm gonna when he comes over on thursday night for dinner and to do his laundry and everything uh i'm gonna see if these are things he wants to have if he doesn't want them he doesn't have to have them but you know i'd be happy that they had a new home you know so anyways yeah and did we do anything else in the past week? Not that I can remember. But uh, last night, though, we we often on the weekend sort of nibble. We don't have major meals on a Saturday, Friday or Saturday night or Sunday night. Um, you know, major sit-down meals. We usually do sort of hors d'oeuvre kind of things and that kind of whatever. Walter had got these shrimp that were breaded shrimp with a hot sauce or something you put on and you know one of those appetizer type things and so he thought he'd do those last night he did they were absolutely horrible the sauce was a yellow color not a red color it showed on the package it was a red color wasn't hot at all i ate two of those shrimp they were terrible they tasted a little fishy and for the rest of the evening and usually food doesn't bother me no matter how bad it is, my stomach did not feel that great. Walter said he felt all right, and he had a few more than I did, but we just threw them out. Well, we were really pissed off with that. And, um, you know, first of all, frozen shrimp should not taste fishy. And I hate fish, so I know when I taste fishy, um, or when I taste something fishy. That came out the wrong way. Um, so, Walter wrote to the company he had pictures of the final product when it had been done cooked pictures of the box the whole bit and i'm not sure all he said but i think he basically said what happened to us uh with it so we'll see if this company responds they do have a line on their box saying you know they want if you have any concerns to contact this email address so we have done that uh the company name or the, it was called panache i think don't think we've ever had any of their products before. Certainly not going to have any more of their products in the future either. I am just glad that I wasn't sick. But I told you, there was one moment where I thought I could actually have thrown up from it. So, you know, I'm still so thinking in my head, had these been refrozen? This was a frozen food product. And I'm wondering if when they were handled by the store, these did not get into a freezer or something like that had thawed and they threw them back in the freezer. That might account for the fishy taste. I don't know. But either way, I'm really glad that I didn't get food poisoning from them. But I'm pretty sure I would have if I had kept eating them. Ugh, but they were just gross. So if you're in the market for frozen shrimp uh, appetizers, do not buy any that say panache on them. I think it was P-A-N-C-H-E. Um, because, well, I was disappointed. So I'll let you know in upcoming videos if we ever hear from this company or not. Okay, so yeah. What else is coming up this week? Nothing. Nope. Can't think of a thing. So anyways, I have things to make and things to print. So there's always something to do. So I hope you have a great week. Uh, I hope everything is going well in your world. And I hope you're getting a chance to be a little bit creative too, to relieve any stress you may be feeling for a variety of reasons. And um, kick a trucker if you get a chance, at least the a-hole ones, not the good guys, okay? <laughs> and we'll see you next week. Bye for now.